out of course, and he went and run the money changers out of the temple. But if you'll notice, whenever Jesus lost his temper, it was when people were perverting God and perverting what he had to do. And, and, and he was always, when he had problems, it was always with the religious folk. But when there was somebody really hurt, somebody really in need, somebody looked beyond religion and just needed God, what did he do? He was always there. I lived in Benson right off the of exit. And people would go about would go by this exit and they would always go down the phone book and start calling the churches. And because we were one of the first one of the Fairhaven Church of God was one of the first ones in the in the uh, yellow pages, I got called at least once a week. We broke down, don't have any money, we're hungry, blah blah blah. Same same story every week. So I asked the guys, I said, guys, is there a way I can just have a certain amount of money without asking anybody anything and just take this money and just give it to these people when they come by? I said, because you don't know who's really telling the truth and who's not. And I said, I don't want to give a whole bunch, but we do want to make sure they're getting something to eat. And they said, sure. So if I own it, $20, $25, every week we get a call. <coughs> And somebody said, why are you doing that? I had people that give me their card and say, we're going to give you back this money later on. We're going to do this and that. You're going to hear from us again. I never heard from any of them. Not one. Never one. But I know that I took time out to help somebody in need. And I would just do my own ways. I'm going to close this one story. I was getting off my shift as uh, there was only seven of us. We were the core group of a brand new program. There was a hundred and something ministers signed up for a brand new program at Mrs. Johnson Hospital. She picked seven people to be the core group, the pilot, the pilot group. She got somebody from each denomination. She got me. And so uh, we were building the, the new chapel program. We even at Campbell, Campbell University trained their chaplains how to do hospital business. Well, I was on shift to be called in as from, uh, I mean, from Monday morning till Sunday night. So you turn in some Monday morning at 8 o'clock. Well, I was preaching. And the pager went off, so one of the guys, Ricky, the guy that goes here preaches sometimes, Ricky, Ricky saw the thing go off, and I already told Ricky to see it go off, call him to see what's going on. So Ricky called him to see what was going on. And they said there was somebody uh, that was having a hard time with their with, with their blood pressure and all their vital signs of, you know, a pregnant lady. And so I, he come and told me, I said, well, tell them I'll call them after service and I'll go see them. So I, I called them after service and they said, uh, she's going to sleep now. So it'll be okay. So next morning at 8 o'clock, I go to turn into Pager. When I turn into Pager, the Holy Spirit pricks my heart and says, go talk to her. I said, well, Lord, I'm off shift finally. He says, Go speak to her. So I go in intensive care, and she's hooked on the machines, oxygen, all kinds of stuff. And we're sitting there talking. She's pregnant. We're talking. She's a young lady, and she was church of God. And so we're talking. And about five minutes into the conversation, the Holy Spirit spoke to me, just as plain as day, and said. Her problem is not medical. Her problem is emotional and spiritual. She's anxious because she's getting ready to abort that child. She can't make a decision. This is the Holy Spirit talking to me. And so, again, I could have just went on my way and not even gone to talk to her, but she's talking to me, she's crying, and I said, can I be bold and tell you what the Holy Spirit is telling me right now. And she said, yes, sir. And this was against all the rules of the hospital. All the rules. 
I was breaking all the chapel rules. I said, I believe you're probably going through blood pressure, your breathing, and your sugar, and all this stuff is from anxiety. And I said, it's because you can't decide whether you want to abort this child or not. And you're thinking about aborting this child soon. And she busted out crying. And she said, how did you know that? I said, the Holy Spirit just told me that. And so we get talking on and on and on and on. She goes, uh, I'm so glad you come and talk to me. She said, because I really didn't know what I knew about this child. And, and the only thing I knew to do was to abort it. And now talking with you, I know different. And I said, matter of fact, here's what I want you to do. I want you to, uh, when this child is born, her mama came in the room. He said, mama, she said, mama, I'm not going to abort the child. And her mama went, whoa, and she was crying. And she said, well, how did he know? And she said, God told him. And I told her, I said, you know what? If it's a girl, just remember victory. If it's a girl, name her Victoria. If it's a boy, name her victory. But, or victor, but victory. You got victory in this in your whole home. Well, I left that day. I decided to come back at night to visit her. When I came back to intensive care, the nurse said, uh, she's not in intensive care. She's in a regular room. I said, but you can all these monitors. She said, yes, I know. We want to talk to you about that. And I said, wow, whoa, 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 whoa. What are you talking to me about that? She said, what did you do to her? She literally asked, what did I do to her? I said, I didn't do anything to her. She said, no, no, no. She was a lawyer's machine. She left and everything started going down the road. So she's in a regular room. I said, that's just the power of God. And so I walked to her room again. I told her, I said, Victoria, victory, victory. You got the victory. Well, that was early on in her pregnancy. We left and moved to Williamston. And we're in Williamston one day, and my wife says, uh, says, there's an envelope here, and it smells kind of good. And it's got David Linton on it. She said, you got something you want to tell me? I said, it's got to be DC's. <laughs> and I said, let me see that envelope. And I turned my back. On the back of the envelope, it said, Victory. I said, no, this is mine. I forgot all about it. And I opened up that letter. And this was the one, the one time somebody let me know. He said, Pastor David, I'm here to tell you that I followed God's direction. And we had that baby. And it was a boy. Matter of fact, his name is Victor for victory. And she says, thank you for coming that day. And thank you for letting God talk to you. And thank you for not just brushing me aside, but taking time. She said, me and Victor will never forget what you did. I didn't do anything. I was a Western Union man. I delivered the message. But you see, this year coming up, we get down, I get a bit easy. I can just drop the pager off and went on about my business. That Monday morning, just dropped off the pager. I was tired. Throw off the pager and just keep on going. But instead, I listened to the Spirit. I went in and talked with that lady. And immediately, it's an immediate thing how God started working in her life. Matter of fact, I went and told the director of the program what happened. And she got so excited. And so, so I came back to the hospital a week later. She said, I'm resigning. I said, well, why are you resigning? I was one that messed up. She said, yeah, but I told everybody how good it was. Our program so awesome that we prevented an abortion. And she said, what you told me was in confidence. And I got so excited. I was blabbering all the board. They're all excited. And she said, so since I broke your confidence, I'm quitting. I said, please don't quit. <laughs> so then I had to <laughs> minister to her as far as I know. She's still a director there. I don't know. But this year, <laughs> This year is our best year. But the only way this can be our best year is if we quit waiting for somebody else to do it. And do it. Quit waiting for somebody else to go out and call somebody. Quit waiting for somebody else to get a hold of somebody else. Quit waiting for somebody else to do something. Do something. If 
your house was on fire tonight and you woke up in the middle of the night and your house was on fire, are you going to lay there and burn to death? Or are you going to lay there and let your children in there? You're going to get up and do something, aren't you? Well, guess what? The church all over the world is on fire. Do something. Do something. This church Watch what God will do. Next week's going to be the kicker in of this one. It is New Year's resignation. And then I'm talking about somebody quitting. It's going to be something entirely. we got to be here to see it, to hear it. But it's going to be awesome. Let's all stand.
talking about how bad we've done, blah, blah, blah. We're our worst critic. How about this year? Try to learn how to say, yes, we can. <clears throat> yes, God's in this. Yes, God's got this. God's got this. I can do this. I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. I know God talks to me. I thank you for talking with me. I know God's got this. Try doing stuff like that. See, see how your life will turn around overnight. Overnight. How I many know what G O G I is? Or G the G I G O is. Garbage in, garbage out. That's what you tell about computers. Garbage in, garbage out. I tell my boys all the time, they go, they didn't try to teach me that we came from monkeys. I said, son, for that class you may have to answer what they said, but just remember, it's G-I-G-O, garbage in, garbage out. Remember that. But the same way, you know what? Why do I want to eat out of a trash can when I got a refrigerator with food in it? And I got cabinets with food in it. Why don't I want to eat out of a trash can? The same way, why do I want to have a trash can in my head when there's all this stuff around us that's good? Feed your brain good stuff. Amen? Amen. Proceed to dismiss the prayer, please.